Hello, it's another edition of Plus Reports, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. Welcome, I'm Jacinta Obioko. We are starting off on the 2022 Budget Defense, where Chairman National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, retired Brigadier General Buba Mawa, has said the agency needs adequate funding to function optimally and efficiently as drug barons are tempting its officers. He said this during the 2022 Budget Defense Office Agency before the House of uh, Representatives Committee on Drugs and Narcotics in Abuja. In his presentation, Marwa supported the, proposed, uh, the proposal by the committee that the NDLEA should be drawing funds from the Police Trust Fund. Details in this report. Drug addiction and trafficking is a major social and economic concern across the globe, and Nigeria as a nation is not left out. Billions of dollars have been voted every year by these countries to fight the scorch, as well as go into cross-border agreement to stop the illicit trade from getting into the countries. But if a testimony from the current chairman of the agency during his 2022 budget defense is anything to go by, Nigeria is still scratching the surface in the fight against illicit drugs. But there are still numerous areas, both in the overheads and in the capital, as we have explained, uh, for, for the help, for your help to intervene and, and, uh, and enhance so that the effectiveness of drug law enforcement across uh, the board will be ensured recognizing the threat to national security that we face. For the buttressing these, the former governor of Lagos State listed various areas the agency is lacking, which includes inadequate funding to acquire arms and ammunition, vehicles for operation, accommodation for staff, and low budget for media and publicity, to mention a few. The committee expressed their desire to assist the agency in every way possible to function effectively and efficiently. We are also very mindful that in spite of the challenges we've had over the years in the funding and what have you, we also know very clearly that there are also some bad eggs in that organization who have not actually put to maximum use some of the resources available to them. All efforts should be put in place to ensure that the NDLEA is taken as a priority agency because the drug situation in this country re requires an emergency. That is the truth. Everywhere, primary schools, secondary schools, market everywhere. Nine million naira, <laughs> which is almost the cost of a trip of one director in some agency. Gentlemen, let us be very fair to ourselves. Yes. We want somebody to walk. You don't give him sufficient tools to walk. How does he walk? The committee promised to render all the assistance to ensure more funding for the agency to provide equipment and for the welfare of its personnel to enable it block access to illicit drugs within and into the country. Considering the immense contributions of small holding women farmers in the agricultural sector, farmers in the Federal Capital Territory under the aegis of Small Scale Women Farmers Organization are calling for more funding for the agriculture sector in the 2022 budget year. This was contained in a communique reached after a state level stakeholders consultative meeting. More in this report. These farmers from the Federal Capital Territory brainstormed on ways to press home their demand for more funding for agriculture in 2022 FCT budget. In the communique issued after more than four hours, they called for the effectiveness participation of smallholder women farmers towards making the 2022 agriculture budget more responsive towards food security. Two, advocating for increase in budget allocation to FCT agriculture budget 
in line with the 10% Mal Malabo commitment. Three, presenting the analyzed 2021 agricultural budget to stakeholders to show where gaps need to be filled. And lastly, generating key budget line items that target smallholder women farmers for increased productivity and poverty reduction which can be included in the 2022 agri-budget. They also came up with some recommendations which include promoting gender mainstreaming in budgeting allocation, as well as to ensure timely passage of the 2022 budget, as well as strictly adhere to the January to December budget cycle. It is imperative for FCT to determine the number of farmers in FCT and disaggregate such statistics along gender and scale of operation line as part of necessary step towards proper planning. Representative of Action Aid explained the importance of the meeting as it concerns the less privileged in the society and why it is partnering a noble cause like this. As FCT is preparing the budget for the 2022, um, we are supporting the farmers and other NGOs to engage with the budget process for the agricultural sector for 2022. So this consultative meeting is for them to be able to present an analysis of um, what was in the 2021 agriculture budget and the gaps identified and to also um, push for things they feel that should be captured in the 2022 agriculture budget. They called on the media to be partners in this advocacy as a way of encouraging participation in the sector, as well as remind the government on the importance of agriculture. Opinions also have it that if the nation must be reckoned with in terms of food security and production, the 2022 budget should create a specific budget for both youths and women as their role in food production cannot be underestimated. The House of Representatives Committee on Steel summoned the managing director of Premium for failing to appear before an ongoing investigation into the mismanagement of Delta Steel Company, a large job. The summons became necessary following his refusal to testify on the alleged wreckage of the multi billion dollar Delta Steel Company. It was established in 1979 by the federal government to drive the industrial revolution in Nigeria. Visa Council and management team of Premium Steel staggering a walkout from the public investigation. This was a missed protest by leaders of host community of Udu local government where the company cited. Reason is the community turned down the request of a council from premium steel to address it on behalf of the managing director but the committee rejected the move insisting that the managing director must appear in person he berated the councils for their irresponsible behavior the deputy chairman say aye. Aye. aye those against say nay the eyes have it so mr man you can step down Honorable Benjamin Igbakpa had earlier briefed on the importance of investigating the takeover by premium steel from global infrastructure. Also, the downward slide and why it has become expedient at this time in the life of the country. Minister of Mines and Steel Development Uchioga exonerated the ministry in the takeover process of Delta Steel from global infrastructure to premium steel, but called for an open investigation. Mr. Chairman, it was discovered that the new company that did that acquisition was actually registered when the bid for this acquisition was already on. That is to say that that company was registered to buy Delta Steel. And as it is today, Delta Steel, a lot of the equipment in that place that used to employ over 5,000 young men and women is a ghost of its own shadow. There are a lot of issues on that asset because the asset was used to borrow money and in the process of borrowing money was transferred to Amcon and Amcon had to sell. Is it not true? Yes. Uh, so why you say, I know. Because the global infrastructure was involved, but along the line, the, they were involved, they used the asset, which was one of the reasons they were not supposed to use the assets of the company to borrow money. 
So they borrowed money. And in the process, Amcon had to, the banks had to transfer the debt to Amcon. And Amcon now sold the asset to premium uh, steel. A glory tale of balkanization of Delta Steel edifice by premium steel management by restive youths of the community. There are just about 30 of them that are running the entire company as we speak today. No other person is there with them. There are with about 20 community boys. Those are the only people you can find in that yard if you go there. Premium C is not capable. It's not capable. They don't have finance. They don't have money to run the plant. The investigation is expected to continue on Wednesday, November 3rd, when the managing director of Premium Steel is expected to appear to testify before the committee. The House of Representatives is investigating allegations of land and housing racketeering against staff of the Federal Capital Development Authority, FCDA. Thus include accusations of forgery and cloning of land documents. Other petitions are bordered on allocation of lands without the minister's approval and revocation of land titles without following due process. Abuja real estate is a multi-million naira sector with buildings coming up every day. But these housing investments are overshadowed by the activities of fraud stars, sometimes with the active participation of staff of the Federal Capital Development Authority. This is the reason the House of Representatives set up an ad hoc committee to investigate developers in the capital city. The current housing deficit in Nigeria, which is estimated to be between 17 and 20 million housing units, and also said to be increasing annually by about 900,000 units, the potential cost of overcoming this deficit is also put at about 6 trillion naira. This highlights this highlight the huge opportunity that exists in the real estate sector. However, there are gaps in the relevant legislation that empower some real estate developers while they capitalize on this opportunity to also operate with impunity. Work with relevant stakeholders and ministries, departments and agencies of government towards formulating laws, issuing guidelines or other appropriate legislation and regulations for more than a trillion naira sector. The chairman of the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission is here at a sitting of the House Committee to submit petitions received against staff of the FCDA. Efforts should be made towards improving transparency in mass housing projects by providing workable evaluation mechanism to eliminate corruption generally that dog these schemes. Government should, and as I've said earlier on, at least the current minister has uh, made the effort towards creating data banks of stakeholder experiences, information sharing, in order to educate people who aspire to own land. As the hearing continues, the minister of the FCT promised to accept the recommendations of the House of Representatives Committee. We'll be able to look at all these issues across the entire value chain, including all the issues raised by the chairman of ICPC. So that at the end of the day, uh, the committee will guide us through its robust conclusion of the discussions here, so that I think ultimately the whole objective is a way forward. Estate developers, civil society groups, the police and other stakeholders were all present at the hearing. We will now go on short break. We will be right back for more.